Alright, hello everyone. Today we're gonna be making a new requested tutorial. This one we're going to do some UI work, so this will be my first UI tutorial, and I'll probably be making a lot more UI tutorials later. Um, I will be going a bit more into detail about everything in this tutorial, since it's the first one, so it might take a bit longer, uh, probably two or three parts. So the request is the request you see here. Um, once a menu for that is the same for both two player teams and each team can pick characters uh, from the menu up to six characters and there should not be allowed duplicates within the team but uh, you can have the same character on both teams as far as I understand it. Um, so let's just go right into the trigger editor here and start this. All I've done is I've deleted the um, melee triggers and I've also gone into the player properties here and I've set up up to six players. I'm not going to do more because there's a bug currently with more than ten players the game crashes so six will be fine. We're going to have to write some testing functionality because I'm going to be testing this alone. But let's just get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new folder. And we will call it character selection. Selection, not selections. It's lovely. And another folder. Once again, you'll see... I'll do the same as in my last tutorials. I really like to keep structure in my maps. So you'll probably see me doing a lot more of this in my future tutorials. All right, so the first thing we need to do is think a bit about the design of what we want to do here. Uh, since we're gonna be wanting six characters, two teams, we're gonna have to track which characters are selected in each team. And there's also gonna be six buttons and a dialogue, and we're going to have to track all of these items. So let's start with a dialogue. So select this is going to be a, uh, actually I'm going to just name it dialogue, dialogue, and then dialogue items. This is for the dialogue items. So we find dialogue item in here, and it has to be an array with six elements, since we're going to have six buttons. This is going to be the dialogue itself. Um, you need to keep track of everything you're going to interact with in a dialogue has to be kept track of in variables. You will see why later. But just remember to put all your dialogues into variables and all your dialogue buttons and anything you want to change on a dialogue, you have to put into variables. All right, so we're going to have to track each team as well, which characters they've picked. So I'm just gonna make select players and characters picked. I'm gonna make it uh, boolean simple. We make it size two times six. So then the first one will be the identifier for the team, team one or team two. You could add three, four of these for each team. And then this will be the amount of characters. So we're going to start it at false. And when the character is picked in a team, we're just going to flip it to true for that character. And then we're going to update the dialogue and just hide the button for all the players on that team. All right. And uh, we're also going to need um, teams variable. You could do this in many ways. You could be using player groups. Um, I'm just thinking about how to best do it. I actually think player groups might be best. So char, uh, char select players and then uh, teams. Teams. <coughs> no, excuse me, I still have a cold, so player group, array, size 2. Now I'm going to create a new 
action definition actions um this action is gonna be select add player to team and it's gonna take in a variable team ID and player ID fairly simple um because I enjoy doing this, I'm going to do a minimum value of 1 and a maximum value of 2 here. I prefer having it set here as well. Of course, this is going to be a bit more work if you're going to go in and add more teams. You're going to have to go edit these uh, minimum maximum values, but it's, I think it's worth it. It makes it um, easier to use if you copy to a new map. Less chance of someone making mistakes. <coughs> So what we're going to do in here is we're going to take, uh, I actually haven't worked with player groups, so this will be new for me. Add player to player group. Yeah, seems fair enough. No, add player, this one, yeah. Add player to player group. Player, and then we simply take player ID to group, take our variable index team ID. Easy. Then we go in here in the initialization trigger and we just use our action. Team ID 1, player 1. Player 2 and player 3, we're going to put them all on the same team. Team 2, player 4. Player 5 and player 6. Alright, so that's our team set up. Uh, now we have to create the UI. So we're going to make a new action here. Init UI. So initialize UI. And this one probably won't be taking any parameters. I will just call it here. So we already set that. Excuse me. And um, all right. So the first thing we need to do when we create the UI is to create the dialog itself. So we're gonna do go down here and you go to dialog and you find create dialog. Create um, this modal non modal is um, basically if a dialog is called to show again, if it's a um, uh, non-modal dialog, it will, um, oh, I completely forgot which is which, but anyway, one of them, you will um, be able to call it up multiple times and show it multiple times for the same player, so you can have five of that dialogue on the screen at once. The other one, each new dialogue you try to create will replace the old one. Anyway, let's just leave these as it is, center of the screen, no offset, width and height. Uh, we can change the width and height later and we can move the dialogue later, so I'm just going to create it. And then I'm going to set variable here. As I said, you always need to track, not dialogue, items, dialogue. You always need to track your dialog. So just use this last created dialog and put it into this variable as soon as you create it. All right, so we have a dialog. Now what we need to do is we need to add the buttons. We're going to have six buttons. And I prefer to do this stuff. You could do it with action if you want to create a separate action and add button and stuff like that. But I prefer to do it with um, a loop for each integer. And then we're going to take here temp button number. And then we're going to have another way here. Total number of buttons. We're going to set this one to 6. You'll see later, I will set it up so that I can easily add more buttons and change the whole dialog without having to tweak so much. I prefer putting variables up here with width, height, and everything, and then um, and then it's a lot easier to change the dialogue later on if I decide to make a small adjustment.